Good morning, and welcome to our video devotion for Tuesday, July the 20th, 2021. Today we're going to talk about love, what it is, and where it came from. So if you have your Bibles this morning, take out your Bible and turn with me to 1 John chapter 4, and we're going to read verses 7 through 21. That's 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 21. Listen to what God's Word says to us. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed His love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but we love one another. God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and His love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in Him and He in us. He has given us of His Spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent His Son to, to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in Him and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because He loved us first. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. But for whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And He has given us this command, Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and their sister. All right, let's think about what we just read here. God has given us a command to love one another. And by the way, this is not an option. Some option of advanced learning for, hidden on page 536 of the Manual for Christ-like Living. This is page one stuff. This is basic. You must love others. Now, this raises an interesting question. Where does love that we're supposed to share with others come from? Does it come from somewhere within the heart and mind of each and every individual person? Or does it come from a different person or place altogether? Now, I suspect if you were to ask the average person on the street, they would probably say, well, you know, love originates within each individual human being. Now, obviously, it would help here if you had parents and grandparents who showed you lots of unconditional love. But ultimately, whatever love that you have has to come from, you know, inside of you. It has to be self-generated. That's what people think. It really goes something like this. Under this idea, love starts here with you in the center of everything. Then it has to spread out and embrace others. Now, if you're a Christian, the first place your love gets directed is towards God which sounds about right. After all, Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. The problem is, when you take that attitude, you're starting at the wrong place. Look, if love for God originates with you, within you, then you have to take the initiative in seeking Him. You, you, you join the millions of people around the world who are seeking out some spiritual truth. You join the millions of people who are looking for some assurance, some proof that God exists. All of this means that at some point you have to fall in love with your idea of God. God doesn't become the personal, caring, loving God who sent Jesus to die for you on the cross. That's revealed biblical truth. No, you have to fall in love with some eternal, dispassionate, philosophical spirit in the sky who is one with the universe. Because in some form or the other, that's what people who, all, who don't know Jesus always come up with. 
if they don't know the truth, if they don't know the truth. Now I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but if you say you have to take the initiative in loving God, think about, I mean, what's the point? Why go to all the trouble? Now, think about how this me-centered understanding of love affects the other relationships in your love, in your life. Now, once again, if you're going to be, you're going to be the center of everything. It all has to start with you. The love you generate within yourself has to radiate out to touch others. That includes the love that you have for your husband or your wife, your children, your grandchildren, your parents, your grandparents, your brothers and sisters, your family and friends, your church family, and anyone else you can think of. Now, all of this might work out just fine if it weren't for two things. One, you aren't God. And two, you are a sinner. Let me take each of these things one at a time. If you were God, you would be able to generate perfect, unconditional, unlimited love from within yourself. After all, God is love. And all those things that 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says that love does, you'd be able to do those things perfectly all the time without any limits or flaws. You would be at peace with the universe and every person in the universe. You know, all that kumbaya stuff. But you're not God. You are, what you are is a sinner. And sin has not only dis- damaged, your, destroyed your vo- vertical relationship with God, it has fundamentally damaged you as a human being, which means every relationship that you have with every other human being in your life has been damaged. For example, I love my grandchildren with every fiber of my being. Even as they're getting older, when they walk through the door, they turn bad days into good days and good days into great days. But having noted all of that, they were all over the house recently. And at one point, uh, they were, they were, uh, two of them were having an argument. One of them was whining about something. And for a few minutes there, I didn't get mad or, or say anything, mind you, but I wasn't having very loving grandfatherly thoughts about the three of them. Actually, my thoughts were kind of uh, wicked, if you really want to know the truth. Look, here's the bottom line. The reason why people efforts, why human efforts at love inevitably fail is because they're built on a false premise. And that's the assumption that love has to generate within you. It's interesting, before 1 John talks about God's love to command to love others, it begins by establishing a fundamental truth. Love doesn't originate with you, within you and me because love, real love, originates with God. In 1 John chapter 4, verses 10 through, uh, 7 through 7, and then verses 10 through 11, let's look at what it says once again. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, God's love came first, we also ought to love one another. The source of perfect love is God. That's what the Bible is saying. Because God is love. Love doesn't define who God is. God defines what love is. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8 has been called the hymn to love. I mean, there's a reason why I read this at every wedding I conduct. But you know, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8 can better be understood as a description of who God is. In fact, every time the word love appears in this passage of Scripture, you can substitute God's name for love and you'd be right on target. So let me try to do that. God is patient. God is kind. God does not envy. He does not boast. He is not proud. He does not dishonor others. He is not self-seeking. He is not easily angered. God keeps no record of wrongs. God does not rejoice, delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. God always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. God never fails. God is love. Everything he does, everything he's ever done 
is rooted in love. He created the universe in love. When he judges sin, it's done in love. He established his law as an expression of his love. He sent Jesus to die on the cross because of his love. His, for, his, his love causes his forgiveness to be, to be offered to others. He's willing to save anyone who calls on the name of Jesus. God administers creative discipline to his children in love to keep them from straying into sin. Because of love, God is preparing an eternal home for us that's more wonderful than anything we can possibly imagine or dream of. Now, once you understand that love originates with God, everything changes. God, who is the source of perfect, unconditional love, freely pours out His love into your life. You can imagine for your moment, a moment that your, that your life is like an empty pitcher. God's grace begins to pour in there and it begins to pretty soon that what the love just overflows the pitcher, overflows you with mercy and grace and care and compassion and sympathy and understanding and kindness and intimacy. It's not only all you need, it's more than you can possibly take in or give away. And just for the record, you don't have to worry about the well of God's love ever running dry. God's love is infinite. It's limitless. There's no end to it so that it can, it can meet all of your needs and let you fulfill God's command to love others in Jesus' name. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of devotion. Father, I pray that as we've thought about these things that we realize that the best thing we can do is surrender ourselves to you and let you love on us so that we'll be able to love on others. Father, we make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, that'll do it for today. We're going to continue to study 1 John chapter 4 during Thursday morning's devotion. Hope that you'll join me then. I also hope that you'll be with us tomorrow evening for our Wednesday evening worship and Bible study and prayer meeting. We're having a great time working through Paul's first letter to the Corinthian church. We, all, we always begin right here at 7 o'clock in the worship center. Well, until then, I pray that you will have a happy, safe, and blessed day. I love you. Bye-bye.